also a big man as well. Namibian Julius Ndongo challenged Russian Edward Trayanovsky for his IBF and IBO World Super Lightweight Championship in a clash between unbeaten super lightweights. Despite coming into the fight as an underdog, Ndongo shocked the boxing world in his first fight outside his native Namibia. Вот это да! Первым же практически точным ударом. Левый прямой, точно в челюсть. Вот пос посмотрите, точно удар в челюсть в первом раунде. Эдуард Трайновский проигрывает бой нокаутом. British Olympic gold medalist Audley Harrison faced fellow Englishman Michael Sprott for the European Union heavyweight title in February 2007. Harrison was clearly the bigger fighter, and he went right after Sprott as the bout began. The Olympic medalist floored Sprott with an overhand left. However, Sprott made a comeback and returned the favor in round three with a left hook to score a scary knockout. In April 2013, Javier Fortuna squared off against Mexican brawler Miguel Zamudio with the interim WBA featherweight championship on the line. From the promoter going into a Fortuna, who came into the bout with an unbeaten record, swarmed Zamudio from the opening bell and floored him with a hard left hook. Got that in his mind. Oh, good night. Beautiful left hook from Javier Fortuna. The training did not make that much of a difference that he as you were stating. The Mexican bravely got back to his feet, but Fortuna went in for the kill and landed another massive hook to end the fight. Bumblebee because of his power. Now all that Fortuna, Fortuna has to do now. Oh, that's sure he sets up the power punch, the south ball, left hand, and that's what he did, and it's all over. And again, a mismatch when the contract was signed. Why can I stand here and say that it's going to be an early round, an early night? Why can I say on a fight plan that it's definitely going to be a knockout? Because there's a reason for it. And the fight between Hassan Ndam of Cameroon and Alfonso Blanco of Venezuela was for the interim WBA middleweight title in December 2016. However, the fight ended quickly as Ndam connected with a monstrous right hand to knock his opponent out in just 22 seconds. In March 1986, highly ranked British contender Frank Bruno faced South African former world champion Jerry Coetzee in a scheduled 10-round bout. In the opening minute of the fight, Bruno unleashed a big right hook that dropped the former world champion. Coetzee bounced back up, but Bruno quickly resumed the attack and caught his opponent with another right hand that knocked him out cold. He's got him again. He won't get up from that. He's stretched out over the photographers. He'll never make it. He's out, out, out. And Bruno is on his way to a crack at the world title. 1988 Olympic silver medalist Riddick Bowe defended his WBO heavyweight title against his former amateur rival, Jorge Luis Gonzalez. All right, here we go. A 
begin round one. Bo dominated the fight from the opening bell, hurting Gonzalez with multiple combinations throughout the fight. Riddick working in. He's living the punishment. It's hard to turn him out. Good straight left hand by. After five rounds of one sided pummeling, Bo ended the fight with a right hand to the head in round six to retain his title. Like a big advantage. should do it. That should do it. That's the first time Gonzalez has been down as a pro. And if he gets up from this, he fools me. Now Mills Lane doesn't bother to complete the count. Another terrific right hand shot for Riddick Bowe. And I got to tell you. In March 1996, Bernard Hopkins made the second defense of his IBF middleweight title against unbeaten middleweight contender Joe Lipsy. In, Las Vegas, where later tonight in, this ring will be Frank Bruno and Mike Tyson and the IBF. in the fourth round, Hopkins connected with a brutal right uppercut that stopped Lipsy right in his track oh, right before launching a follow-up attack on his helpless victim to score a knockout. Lipsy never fought again after the knockout. He's talking to Dr. Robert Boy in the ring. He's fully conscious. Dr. Boy, the physician, sitting him up. In September 2003, Devereaux Williamson faced hard hitting Joe Messi in a scheduled 10 round bout. The action started with Williamson looking to establish his range. However, Messi quickly charged forward, unleashing a barrage of punches that proved too much for Williamson to handle. Lightning strikes on boxing after dark in Buffalo. And he <laughs> looks good every second of the round, setting it up. Yes, got him with a few jabs, trying to move and getting out of the jabs, and then explode. In July 2011, Poland's Marius Walk faced off against Irish Kevin McBride, who famously ended Mike Tyson's boxing career. However, McBride faced the same fate as Tyson in round four after Marius scored with a huge one punch knockout. McBride retired immediately after this fight. In March 2001, Lance Whitaker defended his WBC Continental Americas heavyweight title against Oleg Muskayev. Then don't touch for okay, this. ring the bell, start the fight. The taller Whitaker used his reach advantage to keep Muskayev at bay for much of the opening exchanges. Then, in a dominant display of power in round two, Whitaker knocked out Muskayev with a brutal combination. Doesn't look Five, like he's gonna get up. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And he did a second round knockout for Lance Whitaker, inches him closer to legitimate title contention. And he did it with glancing blows. British Olympic bronze medalist David Price took on little known German Air Ken Temper who had an unbeaten record of 14-0 in 2015. Sam had a, a similar sort of style to Tepper. He sort of walks people down. And in round two, Tepper stepped up the pace and scored a devastating knockout with an overhand left. Oh, beautiful shot. Oh, dear, 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 dear. Well, it is all going horribly wrong, and I think it's all over. Referee stopped it. Price is out. And it's all gone wrong in the second round. A great shot from Erkan Tipa. 
And David Price, well, where, oh, where from here? And being tall, being a bigger fight, a fight with a bigger reach is so much great. In April 2009, former interim WBC lightweight champion Antonio Pitaluma faced Puerto Rican Jose Reyes for the WBC Latino title. Reyes got off to a good start and got the better of the exchanges in the majority of the first five rounds. Coming into round six, Pitaluma was losing the fight according to the judges' scorecards, but he connected with a huge right hand that knocked Reyes out cold. In November 2011, South African Francois Botha took on Michael Grant for the vacant WBF heavyweight title. It's Rumble Tom in the jungle. There we go, heavyweight, heavyweight explosion. The 43-year-old Botha dominated Grant from the start and came close to stomping his much taller opponent in round 7 and 11. Game. What? Grant? Oh, man, oh, man. Michael's in trouble. Michael's in trouble. Michael's in trouble. Oh, he turns out to be a good the Michael, Michael is out. Michael is out. He's in trouble. He's in trouble. He's in trouble. Looks like he's going down. Coming into round 12, Botha was comfortably ahead on all the scorecards and seemed to be cruising to a decision victory. However, Grant came from behind and scored a knockout with a huge right hand in the final seconds of the bout. You don't see the In August 2002, former world champion James Tony and Jason Robinson squared off in an IBF cruiserweight title elimination fight. It was a battle from the opening bell as both fighters came out swinging. At the end of round five, Tony landed a big right hand that knocked Robinson into the ropes before falling to the canvas. However, Robinson was saved by the bell Hi. and he managed to survive the sixth round before Tony turned the lights out on him in round seven. In November 2012, highly decorated amateur star Gary Russell took on Mexican Roberto Castaneda in a scheduled 10-round bout. For our main event, 10-round fight, this is round one. Russell used his fast hands and superior boxing skills to dominate the fight from the start. It's the win, then makes you pay. Very effective. Before ending it with a brutal right hook in round three. Touched him with the left hand of the body oh. and the right hand. It's over. What a punch. Which of these fights is your favorite? Let us know in the comments section and don't forget to like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe, and click on the notification bell to avoid missing out on any future videos. See you in the next video.